today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable little bee journal using the decoupage clean uh, paper and an old book. And here we here we go. Let's get started. So first you're just going to take an old book. I get mine from the thrift store like Goodwill or um, Salvation Army or something like that. Or you can ask your friends if they have something. Um, and I'm using a really sharp box cutter um, to tear out the guts of the book. You want to be super careful when you do this um, to watch your fingers. You know, I have done this many, many times, um, so I feel comfortable getting right up there, and I have yet to cut my fingers, knock on wood. Um, so just be super careful. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get into um, the places where you need to cut. Um, so you can see I'm struggling with this one a little bit. Some books are much easier than others. Um, and as you're doing this, really try to avoid slicing through um, the backside. You don't want to cut that spine. If you do, it's no big deal. I actually did do it in this video. Um, so I'll show you how to repair that. Um, so that means just hold your blade kind of at an angle toward the inside part of the book and not, not out, if that makes sense. Um, and then um, Nancy B. Designs is going to come out with a really cool video to show you what to do with some of these pages so that they're not wasted. Um, she always has some really great ideas. All right, so I've removed the inside part of that book, and what I'm going to be working with is just this cover. And um, so now I'm going to take some Tyvek tape. This is construction grade tape, and I am reinforcing the spine. Um, and I learned all this by watching, um, I think her name is Pam at Paper Outpost, and she's got some really, really cool detailed videos on how to do this. So consider mine more of an overview, and if you want to get really detailed, go over to Pam at Paper Outpost. Um, so I once I tie back the middle, I'm just going to paint this um, with, I'm using Paint Couture white furniture paint, and I'm painting the inside cover and the outside, and I'm going to go ahead and do two coats on the outside so that that blue doesn't bleed through. You may have to do more than two coats. You may only need to do one coat. It just depends on what the, um, what the base of your book look, looks like. All right, and then um, when you're using a heat gun, uh, I recommend using cool air to dry so you don't deteriorate um, your substrate. Substrate just meaning the cardboard or the MDF or particle board, whatever it is underneath. It's some sort of compressed paper, I don't know exactly, chipboard maybe. Um, but these book covers are obviously um, designed and ideal for making your own journals rather than taping other pieces together. So um, now that that's fully dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my design layout. These papers are from Decoupage Queen um, and they're available in several places now. We've got them in, um, got some retailers in the United Kingdom, one signed up in France, um, across the United States. So several different places. You used to only be able to get these from me, but now you can get them across the world, which I'm super excited about. So this is the art of beekeeping, and obviously this is a bee-themed journal so we're going to kind of stick with this color sort of um, aged looking paper and this is rice paper it's uh, made in Italy and um, you can see I just kind of tore out my design um, I'm not manipulating the design too much because I like the layout of it and I'm focused on uh, that center B image um, and I'm decoupaging right onto the right onto the book using and I use what I used is um, Aline's collage page which I like a lot um, but you can use any 
varnish uh, or decoupage glue that you want. So I'm just kind of working on my design elements a little bit and using bits and pieces and laying it out in a different way. So on that spine, I really liked the queen bee message. So I wanted to make that sort of the title, if you will, on the, um, on the spine of it. So I'm going to layer that in there as well. You can see, so I'll talk about this a little bit. Um, most of you probably already know, but the white background really helps the design to pop um, as intended. Um, doesn't mean you always have to use white. Some people like to show the, um, you know, kind of darkened, you know, design background, which is perfectly fine too, but I really like the white background when I'm doing decoupage because uh, I really like to see the colors as vibrant as possible. Um, so this one is called, this paper, particular paper is called Queen Bee uh, with roses actually. And then the other one, you can see it up in the right hand corner. That one is called Queen Bee with red roses. So we're, we get really original when we name these. Um, obviously I like the crowns and the, the honeycomb and all of those um, really cute elements layered in. Um, and I'm just overlapping, so I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not being super careful about where I lay my paper down. It is overlapped here with that rose in the corner, you can see. Um, and I'm just trying to get my um, layout the way I want it. So I, I added that red rose from the other paper in the left-hand corner. Um, and again, so I'm drying now, and I'm just using cold air. Um and also going to decoupage the inside cover. A lot of people use fabric inside, like burlap or something. You can definitely do that. I like to decoupage the inside and the outside to give me kind of the maximum space for, um, for adding my own touches, you know. And then this paper that I'm using will be available in January. One of the advantages to having your own paper company is you can use paper early. Um, so you, this is kind of a preview for you. You'll see this one in January. Uh, not available yet. Um, so it's just called Golden Receipt. And there's a little fairy that goes with the paper as well. Um, but I liked the color scheme and I thought it worked really well with this particular journal. So again, the name of the paper is called Decoupage Queen. And as you can see, there are a lot of um, really cool crowns and script and just very kind of old world feeling things as well. Um, and I think, you know, the bees were one of the very first ones that I designed. In fact, the queen bee was the first paper that I designed because I just love um, bees and beekeeping. I think there's just something kind of magical about it. Um, so this last one, I was working with scraps. <laughs> I didn't want to use a whole separate sheet of paper. So uh, this last design is definitely more of a collage feeling. Um, so it's a little bit different and it's intertwined in there as well. Um, I do have some white spaces around the edges as you can see, and I'll show you how to deal with those in a little bit once this is dry. Um, so I think I'm pretty happy now with the with the layout and all the decoupage. Um, I like the glass mat that I have under there. That's new to me. It's a Tim Holtz um, tempered glass mat, which I just got so I don't have to waste so many paper plates. Okay, so what I just did, I measured, I'm measuring the inside of my journal, and I used that box that I just showed you to cut out one inch by nine and a quarter strips, and I'm gluing two of them together to make um, the, the spine that I'm gonna glue inside. So I'm going to attach the pages to this spine 
um, and then glue that all inside the book. If that makes sense. So th again, this is one in one inch by nine and a quarter, and it fits perfectly inside the middle of that book. Um, you don't want to get it too big or too small. It needs to really fit in there nice and tight, but not too tight, if that makes sense. Um, in order to really have a solid, um, just a solid, secure um, surface for your pages. Okay. So, and I, I'm just painting it. You can get decorative with this if you want to, but I just painted it brown. Um, all right, so now I'm going to use Stamperia Antiquing Paste. Uh, just discovered this product. I really like it a lot. And I am going to distress the edges of my book with this, with the antiquing paste. Um, and, you know, to give it a more vintage feel and also to, um, you know, hide some of those little white corners where I didn't go. I wasn't very exact about the, um, you know, the size of the rice paper that I was using, I sort of ripped it around, which is, which is what I intended to do. Yes, I meant to do that. <laughs> so I'm just taking a paintbrush, an older, old paintbrush, and um, blending out my edges with that Stamperia antiquing paste. And it really gives it a nice vintage, um, almost kind of a, a foxed, you know, a foxing to it. Foxing is when um, you get stains on your paper and the book pages turn brown. Um, and I did design some of this paper, you know, with the stains kind of already in it as part of the design. So this this uh, technique really helps to enhance um, some of that aging that is already in the design. Um, this product is a it is kind of an oil-based product so it needs to um, it needs to be applied after you varnish or after your final um, top coat um, and I did do a separate uh, I did do a separate top coat as well um, just of the Mod Podge or Collage Podge So we're going to just finish that up and then I will, when I go to attach the pages, I'll, I'll slow that down a little bit and then walk you through um, how to put the pages in. You can add any other decorative elements you wanted. I try to keep this a little bit more basic. Um, all right, so this is just scrapbook paper and these are going to be the covers for each of the, the signatures. That is what the, um, the little booklets inside are called. And you need to do separate ones. You need to do about three or four um, with no more than uh, 10 pieces of paper each. Um, this paper is nine by 12. I'm using a variety of different papers, um, pick and drawing paper, mixed media paper, uh, some white parchment type paper. So I'm using a variety of different things because I like to have those different elements inside the book. You can use anything that you want in there. Um, but I use, I do use a nine by 12. So it is slightly larger than regular copy paper so that it will fit nicely inside my book. And most of these books, you know, when you, you know, most of them are designed um, in that kind of slightly larger size so that you're working with, um, um, you know, nine by 12 type. Um, so when it's folded, it's nine by six, if that makes sense. So now that's nine by six. And so my spine, that brown spine that I cut out is nine and a quarter. And so um, I am just going to mark off where I'm gonna cut my holes. 
the holes are going to be used to actually sew in these little book covers, these little signatures, okay? So I have four of them with about 10 sheets of paper inside each one of them. I'm lining this up to mark um, corresponding to the holes that I just marked off on my spine. I also, I want my, the holes that I cut through my little pages there to line up exactly with that little spine when I go to sew them in. And I'm using a crocodile hole punch. It's set to 1 8 so it's tiny little holes punched in, not huge holes, not like ring binder holes. They're, they're really small. Um, and this is the best, absolute best tool that you can use for this purpose because it is going to go right through um, those thick pages without any problem. Um, the crocodile is probably about $25, but definitely worth definitely worth it if you're doing journals so i am punching those holes right in the middle right where i made my marks again that line up with with the marks that i made on the spine and um, you need to use some sort of sharpie or something when you're making those um, holes so that or when you're making those marks so that you can see it when you're going to hole punch I was having a little trouble finding it here so um, and then they need to be folded really nice um, and tight and then see that it just goes right through there's no issues at all trying to punch those holes I didn't measure or anything I just sort of eyeballed it um, I've done this so many times that you know I I, I kind of know where to make my marks now and it doesn't have to be exactly accurate but I do recommend measuring probably the first few times that you do that this just to make sure that your vertically your holes are vertically lined up um, so I'm doing I've got four signatures and I'm doing four holes across in three different um, rows if that makes sense so you're kind of looking at it like a spreadsheet I'm going to count it so <laughs> by, by trade so um, I think in terms of linear and spreadsheets and stuff like that so anyway it's three by four three um, rows four columns of holes so 12 total holes okay and see the top one the middle ones I made just a slightly higher and I did that um, Pam can explain it a lot better than I can at Paper Outpost, but I did that so that I would know the top from the bottom, and I know that the middle holes are closer to the top than they are at the bottom. So when I put that spine in, I didn't have quite enough brown. I was had some white showing, so I'm using Finnebar Liquid Acrylics to in burnt sienna um, to just kind of fill in some of that white space. It's one of my favorite, favorite products of all time. And then after this dried, um, I'm going around a little bit again with it. Um, it's just an amazing, all around amazing product. Okay, so we are almost ready to sew our pages in. We're going to use the wax linen thread. Um, it is a, a nice strength and we're going to use a darning needle. It has a super big um, eye in it so that it's, it makes it a little bit easier to thread. And you're going to use three lengths of the book. Um, so one, two, three, and then cut it. Okay, so three lengths of the book for your uh, thread. And I got some of it in my paint, so I need to clean it up a little bit. And that is, like I said, that is a nice large hole. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see it because my eyes are getting older. Um, 
and I'm going to thread it through. So I'm starting with the middle hole and I'm actually going to use in sequence the last signature and I'm putting it through the last column of holes. So start in the middle, go through the top, and then go through the bottom and then come back through the middle. So this is difficult to write out and explain. You just need to kind of watch it to get the idea. And then you're going to make sure uh, that you're perfectly lined up and you're tying that. Your, your tails are on either side of the middle string, so one on each side and then you're tying it to secure that string, okay? So I'm showing you there, it's, it's sewn, sewn in and lined up. So um, let's do it one more time. And again, one, two, three. And you're going through the middle, through the next column up through the top, down through the bottom, and then back in through the middle. That's this last step that can be a little bit tricky. And then again, your strings are on either side, one on each side, and you're lined up. You always need to check the back to make sure your string didn't get caught on something. And then I tie that knot three times. Right, one, two, three. So when I learned this from um, Paper Outpost, I had to watch this uh, a few times. I had to watch her do it a few times. So um, I tried not to speed this one up too much so that you could actually see what I'm doing. Um, and it takes... You know, it takes a few tries, takes a little bit of patience, but definitely doable. And the more you practice, the better you get, and you just know how to do it. So it's just like anything in life, right? Got to, got to do it, see it, do it, and then practice. And then um, just making a nice, you know, just making a nice even surface so that you can attach these inside your book. Okay, and for that spine part, you can use anything. You can use, I used an espresso box. You can use a cereal box. Um, cardboard from a cardboard box would probably be a little bit too thick. So it really needs to be kind of, um, you know, the, the thinner cardboard from from a cereal box or a product packaging or something like that. Not like a shipping box, you know. And then, you know, when I do this, I, I do, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in, but I do the last book first and then kind of work in order towards the top. Okay. And there you go. So you can see everything is secure. It's sewing, but it's not difficult. Anybody can do it. And now I'm ready to, um, to glue that right in there. See, it fits perfectly. And um, I'm going to use, um, let's see, what's, it's called Fabrifix. I started to use my weld bond, but the Fabrifix is a little bit, um, or yeah, Fabrifix, it's a little bit thicker, so it's going to seat down in there um, a little bit better, and it's clear. So I'm going to seat that down in there, and then close up the pages around it, and just make sure, you know, I'm nice and flush up against the spine of the book so that it has a surface to adhere to. And then I'm just pushing all my pages down in there along that uh, brown spine so that it's nice and flat. And I'm gonna let that dry overnight. I actually did, it, it dried overnight. 
and now I am putting the finishing touches on my book. Um, so I dried it, uh, I put it spine down, um, and then edges up and made sure that um, some things were pressed against it, against it so that it, it was left undisturbed all night long. Um, so this morning it is nice and um, nice and dry and fully secure. I don't think there's any chance of being able to rip those pages out <laughs> at this point. Um, and now I'm going to just finish off with my absolute fav favorite product in the world. It is the Finnebear Gold Wax, um, just to add a little bit of glam. You know, but like I said, you can add anything that you want, molds, um, gel, you know, some texture gel, crackle paste, all kinds of mixed media products to make this uh, unique. Um, but I really just wanted to focus on the, the basics of bookmaking here. And you can see there's a little bit of white in that corner. I'm going to finish it off with the um, Finnebear liquid acrylic. And then that is it. There's my journal. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, send me a note in the comments. And um, don't forget to subscribe. You can purchase the paper at decoupagequeen.com. Thanks for watching.